is the Wayne County Football Show with Marshall Wood and head football coach Jack Hankins. Brought to you by Extreme Guns, Alpha Insurance, Boondock Eddies, Circle C Tractor, and First State Bank. All the information you need for Wayne County football. Good evening, War Eagle World, and welcome to our show tonight. Coach Hankins, uh, happy anniversary. Been about a year or so, and you're still here. I'm still here. <laughs> still I'm here. Glad to be here, brother. <laughs> well, I'm glad, and uh, you've already answered that question. How about you? Glad to be yes, here. Yes, sir. March 1st, actually, Monday, and then Monday or Tuesday will be officially a year. I think I came a week early, though. Yeah, just... you did. See if we can get these eagles flying, but oh, hey, man. glad to be here, baby. Well, let, let's pull out the old crystal ball and, and have a look into the future tonight Uh-oh. as we get started. I understand you and your staff have been working with the eighth graders. Uh, who will be your ninth graders in the fall? Let's talk about that a bit. You know, how sure. many strengths, weaknesses in the class, and uh, anyone that might make a contribution, you know, in your goals. Let's talk about this a little bit. All right. Bit. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we do that because that is the future, and that's important to work with those guys. Marshall, if we, if we forget or leave these guys off, we'll be not prepared for our future. So let me tell you what we do right now. Right now we have the 8th graders coming in on Monday and Thursdays, lifting weights with us. Uh, they get here, gosh, they get here a little after 2, 2.15, 2.30. But we, we work out with those guys and go on the field. And just we do a ton of fundamental stuff. Um, and we, we cut them loose around 4 o'clock. Right now we have 53 guys on the roster uh, of that 8th grade class, which, you know, we had a bunch of 8th graders. And, and we look, I understand. I want our War Eagle fans to understand out there, you won't keep all 53 of those guys because when you put these guys together from the middle schools, you know, you got – you hope to have – Dad gum some good players. And so I know one that may have played at this school may not be up to this school, mm-hmm. and someone may not want to want to play past middle school. So you got you got all that kind of – just to, all let that me, to deal with. You now, you got 53, but now you've probably got some that are playing other sports, like baseball that well, may not be here. We do. So I, I think – I think like when I, we started last year, we had over 60. I think we've got – if I'm not mistaken, Marshall, we've got six guys involved with baseball right now that will join us when their middle school baseball is over with. So we're going to be hitting right at 60. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's some good guys in that group. Mm-hmm. I, I say good guys. There's – they're they're learning, um, you know. We really, really, really sit down and focus and, and share our weight room philosophy with those guys because I remember when I was that age, man. I wanted to lift the world, you know. I wanted I wanted to impress coach and put how you know. We try to tell it's, it's you don't impress us with how much weight you. It's not about how much right now. We really spend a lot of time on how to, how to do the lift correctly, how to get them to the right form because if we start form them on the right the form, man, it is. Mm. You know, and then we work on our foot speed. And they can, you can tell at that age they're a little, um, they're not as coordinated as your older guys. And so we do a lot of foot agility and foot speed and try to get the coordination caught up. And uh, now we got some that can, that can <laughs> they, they can go now. They can, <laughs> they can um, you know, they can tap it and move on each side of the line. They can move real quick and do some of the box drills we do really good. But uh, that's what we're doing now. And then and let me tell you this, too, with those guys. Um, we have – a spring just for them, Marshall, on April 14th, unless anything changes, okay? And we'll post that at a later date, too. But right now, we're going to go to Meridian and play Meridian's eighth graders, which, you know, you're rising eighth yeah. grade. You're going to be your freshman next year. So we're going to try to just to do a spring game April 14th just for them guys. This year it will be in Meridian. Next year Meridian will turn a trip to us, so we'll be able to do that next year as yeah. well here. Yeah. Um, so we're anxious to see – I, I really, to be honest with you, I don't know what it's going to look like because they're all coming from different schools, and we got to try to install a base offense and a base that we. Just, that's going to be the hardest part, you know. And I don't want to ever get away from the fundamentals because we're trying to install too much stuff. Right. If that makes sense, but uh, I just, I really like. Somebody said, "Well, why don't you keep them here and just do a, do a orange and white game, orange and navy game, you know?" And well, here's the thing: these kids have all been playing against each other two times a year. I kind of want to see them hit somebody else. Yeah. They need to hit somebody else. You know, yeah. there's that element we used to call it stranger danger. You know, you get away from you. Somebody may knock the crap out of somebody, somebody that he's familiar with. You get it to another somebody that he's not familiar with, it all of a sudden they're different. So yeah. <laughs> I want to see us and see these little young eagles go out there and hit somebody different yeah. and not just the same, you know, hey, we play beat four or we play Riverview or Wayne, you know. Yeah. 
we're going to get out there and hit somebody different. And that, I think that's important for us. Um, of course, we haven't started that practice yet. We'll do that after spring break. we got t- plenty of time for that. But uh, I, I'm really excited about that. I want to see what they they got. Uh, there's some decent size young as in there. And, and like I said, that's probably the hardest thing we can do because we're putting together five people kind of so quick from five different te- I mean, five different teams, mm. different people. Um that's we got to get a little gel going and a little cohesiveness going, and, yeah. and that's why these weights before we start practice will help us because it's going to help with the cohesion and help you know getting along. And that's I, I'm excited about yeah. that. And and those guys and our our staff will coach them. You know we're not going to just turn them over to anybody else. We're going to coach them. And I I think if you you got to spend that time you got to spend that time building your future. Yeah. You know, you go back historically, and I'm not asking for names. You know, we look at the class, and this is not a fair question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, you, you look back, and through the, through the passage of time here, we see every once in a while we'll have a kid that will be in that ninth grade group sure. that will make his way mm-hmm. into the market. We've seen that with, like, Tracy Lampley, Jarrell Poe, you know, people like that that make their way as a freshman into the varsity mm-hmm rotations sure. toward the end of the year do you have that kind of talent you think I, among that number i don't know yet and this is why i'm not saying we do and i'm not saying we don't i want to reserve the answer to that when i see them guys practice on the field right now we're just lifting weights and shorts and yeah. um, like i had an old coach used to tell me and he's right everybody looks good in shorts so i want to see them when we put our hand in the dirt and we hit somebody in the mouth if you know what i'm saying oh, yeah. so i want to see um I, there's some good size youngers in there, Marshall. They're they're really there's some six two and six threes already, and I just you know I wasn't blessed with that that height and size. These these youngers already have it, so I can't wait to see us practice and let's see if we can find one of those guys. Yeah. Well, we're excited about you. You know, the future. You know, is always excited about the future. But uh, we're going to take a break right now to hear from our sponsors, and then we're going to come back and change topics for just a minute. But we'll see you right after the break. Step into the extreme, extreme guns that is, located at 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. You'll find the extreme with the area's only authorized Benelli dealer and the area's only Browning Master dealer. When we say extreme, we mean it, as we have the largest local selection of firearms. If optics is your game, extreme guns is an authorized dealer for Vortex Optics, along with thermal and night vision scopes in stock. In addition to firearms, optics, and ammunition, extreme has all of your bow hunting accessories and we can even repair your cell phone while you look around. Step into and experience the extreme. You'll be glad you did. Extreme Guns, located 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. Once you start banking online, it all just starts to click. You get e-statements, online bill pay, 24-7 access, your whole financial picture right on your screen. Plus, with our bank, you get the local support you need to make it all work. Get clicking with online banking today. First State Bank, a better way to bank. Member FDIC. Online at firststatebnk.com. When you come out to eat with us at Boondock Eddie's, we care. We care about providing you with a pleasurable dining experience that you deserve and will be happy with. We care about the quality of food we prepare for and serve to you. We care about the service we provide if you're dining in or taking out. We care about providing you with the best food you can find anywhere. At Boondock Eddie's, we put our hearts into what we prepare for you because we care. Come out to Boondock Eddie's and see for yourself. If you're looking for a pleasurable dining experience, we make it happen for you because at Boondock Eddie's, we care about you. So much to do and so little time. Get it all done and do it right with Circle C Tractor. Steel products like trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, and accessories. Generate generators that are quieter than a Honda. There's only one place to go and get it all done, and that's Circle C Tractor. Located 1510 Azalea Drive. Open Monday through Friday, 7 until 5 and 8 until noon on Saturday. Locally owned and operated. Call 601-735-3103. When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, our friendly hometown team will steer you in the right direction toward the protection you need at a price you can afford. We offer a variety of discounts for a variety of reasons, from your car's safety features to your history of safe driving. Call Alpha agent Mark Gordon 
at 735-1186. Drive away with savings today at Alpha Insurance. Welcome back, everybody. Listen, uh, we do want to say how much we appreciate our sponsors and everything, and uh, that's a big part of what we do here. Uh, but let's get back to the topic. We're going to change the speeds here a minute, and, and, and uh, lots of folks out there that follow football, and certainly there's a good number of them that are up to speed on terminology and strategies. Likewise, there are folks that are more casual in their approach to fandom, let's say. And let's spend some time, Coach, breaking down various philosophy, strategies, and terminology of the game that uh, people might might or might not know. Okay. Um, That's a broad broad topic. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> you gave me an umbrella right there. Um, and knock it out. You got a free. You got a, yeah. you got a big canvas to paint. All on. right. Well, I tell you what, Marshall says. They, they, oh, let's let's go ahead. Since championships win defense. I guess let's talk a little defense first. Okay. And, uh, I tell you. Well, Wayne County's been known to have some great defenses in the past, have they not? Yes, sir. You, yes, sir. You mentioned earlier in our first segment about some great defensive players that yeah. we've had here. And boy, that, that's that's a blessing when you go out there and have a Jarrell Poe and Benito Jones mm-hmm. and, and Ronald Ali and mm-hmm. all those guys and, mm-hmm. and Tyree Evans and those yeah. guys. Just you know, and I know the list can go on and on and on. Um, so so here's where we are, I guess, with today's game. First of all, I want to say this: tough guys still win football games. Okay, you still have to be physical. You still have to be able to put your hand in dirt. And and there, let me tell you, Marshall, there are some great schemers nowadays. You, you hear me? There are some great guys coming out, young guys, old guys. There are some great guys that can scheme up anything. But but I'm going to tell you, and I, and I tell our coaches, and I remind them every year, the teams that still block and tackle the best – will win football games. It, 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 all the brilliant schemers out there, the teams that still block and tackle, and they, they still have tough guys, you know, that tough guys win football games. Yeah. And uh, now, but they, Go ahead. Toughness. There's a couple of – you may be going there, but there's a couple of elements to toughness. There's that physical side and there's that mental side. Oh, absolutely. I mean, do you spend – I may get you off track, do you spend as much time on the mental side yeah. developing that? How do you develop yeah, mental you toughness? You better. Oh, I wish there was just one <laughs> If we had one, at, we'd, me and you'd go sell, go around the nation and sell it. And we'd sit back and talk about some cows. Uh, you know, we, yeah. it, it's tough. And Marshall, let me tell you, and, and our and our listeners, especially our guys at mine and your age, they'll believe it. it's harder now than it's ever been before because of the cell phone age and the Xbox generation. I, I'm not against all that. I, I'm not. I get it. Let me tell you, when it's a lot easier sitting at air conditioning and play them games and get on that phone and. You know, you can Snapchat and Instagram, this, that, and the other. It, it's harder now than it ever ever has been in the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you do that, I feel, and I don't have the crystal, I don't have the, the, the magic pill here at all. I think if we all did, like I said, it would be millionaires because we'd sell it. It's how you conduct your every single day of going about your business in your program. We have to be consistent in the weight room, consistent with our rules, consistent with our discipline, consistent. We're going to live today even we don't feel like it. it's, it's, it's 65 and sunny outside and we'd rather be outside throwing a football. we got to still do the little things every single day. See that weight room and that grind over the course of a year and the years in the program build your – toughness and your mental discipline mm-hmm. and your mental toughness mm-hmm. and of course practice you know i've got a sign right there by the by the locker room when you walk out our locker room door you can't practice soft and play hard uh, i'm a big believer and i know i'm probably getting off a little bit but you know i and i tell our team this marshall and people may think i'm crazy you know you've heard it forever practice makes perfect practice makes perfect practice don't make perfect you're going to play how you practice Perfect practice makes perfect. <laughs> I got you. Okay. That so makes all this is in the world. If you're soft in practice and you don't have that mental toughness and you don't know, obviously you got to be smart because you can't go out there and play a game every day and get your guys beat up and killed. You got to get them to the game on Friday. But it, but if you don't have that edge and that toughness at practice, uh, you know, it, it don't matter. You know, you, you and I are going to talk about philosophy. I know the rest of this segment probably bleeds into the next segment as well. Um, it's not going to matter if if we practice soft and don't bring that toughness to the 
to the football team and to the players. That that's got to be a, something you do on a consistent basis, Marshall. That, it, that's my opinion. You know, it's funny you should mention that. I'm going back in time a little bit. I can remember walking over here and watching them coming up to a practice one day somewhere around 2004. You know, and I'm, you got folks like you know Poe and McLaughlin out there and Gandy and you know, and you get out there and you got you know uh, some offensive linemen out there, some. Uh, you know, some McCalls and, and Lorettes and these guys, big, big guys. And you walk out there, man, and you're talking about you could hear impacts and mm. dirt flying up in the air. I mean, just it scare you to death just watching it, I, you know. I don't think we would have scared anybody <laughs> last year. But we're going to get there. That's what you, you know. That's what you, you strive can see for. It, yes, sir. You can, you, sure, you, I sure, get you. I you can see you. it. You can feel it. You yeah. you, you know. Yeah. You, you know. Yeah. But um, ab- absolutely. Yeah. But – um. I know we kind of got off. You was talking about defense and philosophy, yeah. weren't we? Yeah, yeah. Is that where you want me? Yeah, yeah. Come on. I, but, uh, I, you got to hang on, man. Well, I'm, I'm looking at a bumper car. I go in a million directions. <laughs> Reel me in, Coach. Do, you, do your job. Well, Coach me up. Uh, well, here's the thing about defense nowadays, Marshall. You, you better be – I know I know this word is kind of a, a catchphrase. You better be multiple. Offense is not – they're not like they were 20 years ago. So many people are doing so many different things, and, and – you know, with, with the spread and the spread options and the spread wing tees, so many people are doing so. If if we're not multiple on defense, yes, if we're not multiple on defense, you know, used to Marshall. I remember one of the best teams in Alabama in the nineties was, was T. R. Miller High School. Mm, okay, I've heard of them. they've won more games in the decade of the nineties than anybody else, probably in the history of any ten year period, and they were five two, cover three, and that's what they run, and it didn't matter. But I've talked to some of their coaches that have been there during that time. You know, defenses has had to change. They've had to change to all the multiple offenses because, you know, 20, 30 years ago, Marshall, you didn't have all this different stuff that you got going. Yeah. And and with the Adam, you know, with just just the the passing games now are, are more complicated. And and you know, years ago, I know we all threw the ball a little bit and did this and that. But you didn't have four and five wide sets all the time 20, 30 years ago. You know that 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 you know people say, oh, we were doing well. You didn't see a ton of that. You know, it was still the old school run game, and that's still good stuff. That's yeah. still great football. Um, the big thing is being multiple, but also you have to have a base to fall back on. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think our defense maybe change would be changing if it, we were in a different region. Right now, we're in a region we're seeing so much spread stuff. Yeah. So we're we're kind of a three three stack guys and a three high where we see a lot of coverage stuff going on. You know, um, I cut my teeth on a three four, but. We see so many different people throwing the football out of different formations and sets. That, and Marshall, these guys are good enough. These receivers that you see nowadays, yeah. you better have guys over there covering them. They can go may, get it. You may have more than one because they can go get it. Yeah, three three stack. Now you know three down linemen, three linebackers. That's right. Okay. What are the advantages of that? What does that All bring right. to your team? Well, let me tell you what how it hurts. Uh, and I, I know because we've dabbled with some spread stuff before and. uh some years more, some years less, depend on the on the players that we've had. But three three's been hard against in the spread for us. First of all, you still got six guys in the box, so it doesn't matter if you're a play a four two or a three three. You still got six guys in the box. You got to block. But if you got like we've been known to have here at Wayne County, some some linebackers that can run and that are really good players, and you can get three backers on the field rather than two, which will give you more speed on the field, okay? Um, last year coming into the season, you remember we were kind of down D line and we, were, we had a couple of starters out. And mm-hmm. we, we It would have been hard for us last year to come out there and say, hey, we're going to run a 4-2. We're a 4-2-5 team. That would have been hard on us because we wouldn't have had four good defensive linemen to put out there at one time, plus any capable backups if anybody needed to rest. So that fit us personnel-wise. Now with your three three stack, you got three backers now that can also get out and cover passes too. Mm-hmm. Instead of just the two that's inside. You know, you still you're still gonna cover with five, whether yeah. you do a three high or two high or four, you know, you still got that. So uh I think it, it really and I think being multiple depends on who you play and depends on what you have. Mm-hmm. But um I think the three three for for us as an offensive line, I'd speak at us last year and, and we're gonna get better at this. It was tougher for our tackle sometimes run blocking to get out and block that linebacker because usually he's stacked over the defensive tackles or mm-hmm. defensive ends, we'd call it. Sometimes those guys, they get covered up and they get hid. 
And it's a little bit tougher for you, O line, to get out there and get to those guys, especially if they're triggering really fast. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody's used to the five, two, or three, four, where there's two backers over the guard. And I like that, and I've cut my teeth on it. Triggering really fast. Triggering fast. That means they re- they got to read their keys and they fly to the football. Yeah. And uh, you get that through film work and eye discipline. Yeah. And you do both of those through the week, and we we coach both of those through the week. And mental reps. You got to like absolutely. We about last you time. got to, but. Yeah. Uh, you you get that I, I, I discipline. That's why you see so many teams do so much motion and they, a lot of smoke and mirrors, Marshall. A lot of smoke and mirrors. Coach, uh, keep going. We're gonna go a little longer today. All keep right. Keep going. So that's basically what you got. Defense. Now I know you you asked me earlier before we started about you know secondary. Now secondary Marshall can can go all kind of ways in a combination of coverages. If you got the ga- if you got the guys, you know you can run some man coverage. Man coverage forces that quarterback to throw a perfect ball. You better go get him because you can't cover man coverage forever, you know. Because like I said, they've got some good cats on that other side that can yeah. that can run, not yeah. run. And think about man coverage, you know, and they they know where they're going. You know, the defensive guys has to react, so it's a little bit tougher. And, and then you got your zone stuff, and we, we we play a combination of zone and man. But you know, your zone can be a two high where you got two deep safeties, which I think all of our people are familiar with seeing a two high zone. Mm-hmm. And then out of that, you can have a, a three high or a three zone. You is that look, a cover two? A co- cover two is two high, yes. Mm-hmm. Or then you got your cover three, yeah. which is your, your three deep zone. Mm-hmm. And then um, you'll run some cover four stuff, which is a four deep zone. Teams mm-hmm. that like to go deep a lot, you better make sure you have people <laughs> back there. And uh, So you can zone it up and cover areas of the field based on – and they're always – term like that based on how many guys you got deep mm-hmm. first so mm-hmm. you know you got to cover two cover three cover four and yeah. after that you'll have a combination of various coverages yeah. and that's that, that kind of stuff's fun now when you start getting into the chess matches with that now when you play a, a play on that deep your defensive front and your your, your go-to we'll just say the three three your defensive lineman are, are these a take a block and read kind of guys or are these an attack slant, stunt 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 slant okay. kind of guy it, yes all, all of them. Yes, it, it's going to be a multiple of all that. Uh, also, if you got Jarrell Poe in there, you just let him beat up the guy in front of him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, or Benito. And, you know, Nick Saban said it best when he was recruiting four or five years ago. I heard him say it. He's like – a reporter asked him why you're recruiting all these big DBs and big running backs. This is the big kids. You know, if you've ever seen them up close, oh, they're, they're huge. Man. I don't think we understand how big these guys are till you really see them. And, of course, he said big people beat up little people. You know? <laughs> that's, that was kind if of – If they can catch them. Yeah, they, that's right. That resonated with me, you know, with a, with a line. You know, those guys are like refrigerators with legs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, we do both, you know. Yeah. If you got to, and some guys are better at, at throwing those hands and pressing it and playing a playing a technique. And some of the guys are, are better at slanting and moving across the face. You know, if you got a really slow offensive line you're going against or a lineman, you can take your quickness and you can slant either way across his face and get that guy moving and and cause a little confusion. Um, and that's always fun for those guys to do. You know, a lot of times you don't ever see the results of that player, that D lineman, but man, if that's the whole key, if you can cause some mass confusion up front with their offensive line, you probably got a, a you've done a good job of discombobulating that play and you, you mm-hmm. then your linebackers just they trigger fast and they go in there and clean it up for, for little or no gain. But uh I like that trigger fast. Yes sir. You yeah got that's to. a term I hadn't heard. Yeah. Uh but anyway, you, I mean, we're learning. That's what we're, we're learning. Yeah. We won't I we won't our listeners to learn, you know, the terminology of the game. And that's what this is all about. You're doing a great job with sure. that, Coach. But the horn's blowing, so we got to go, man. All right. Remember to follow War Eagle Football on Facebook at War Eagle Football and on YouTube at Wayne County High School War Eagle Football. Also, let our sponsors know uh, that you know who they are. We appreciate them, don't we, Coach? Absolutely. Appreciate them very, very much. But for now, Coach Hankins, I, and War Eagle Football, we out. Step into the extreme, extreme guns that is, located at 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. You'll find the extreme with the area's only authorized Benelli dealer and the area's only Browning Master dealer. When we say extreme, we mean it, as we have the largest local selection of firearms. If optics is your game, Extreme Guns is an authorized dealer for Vortex Optics, along with thermal and night vision scopes in stock. In addition to firearms, optics, and ammunition, Extreme has all of your bow hunting accessories. 
and we can even repair your cell phone while you look around. Step into and experience the extreme. You'll be glad you did. Extreme Guns, located 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. Once you start banking online, it all just starts to click. You get e-statements, online bill pay, 24-7 access, your whole financial picture right on your screen. Plus, with our bank, you get the local support you need to make it all work. Get clicking with online banking today. First State Bank, a better way to bank. Member FDIC. Online at firststatebnk.com. When you come out to eat with us at Boondock Eddie's, we care. We care about providing you with a pleasurable dining experience that you deserve and will be happy with. We care about the quality of food we prepare for and serve to you. We care about the service we provide if you're dining in or taking out. We care about providing you with the best food you can find anywhere. At Boondock Eddie's, we put our hearts into what we prepare for you because we care. Come out to Boondock Eddie's and see for yourself. If you're looking for a pleasurable dining experience, we make it happen for you because at Boondock Eddie's, we care about you. So much to do and so little time. Get it all done and do it right with Circle C Tractor. Steel products like trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, and accessories. Generate generators that are quieter than a Honda. There's only one place to go and get it all done, and that's Circle C Tractor. Located 1510 Azalea Drive. Open Monday through Friday, 7 until 5, and 8 until noon on Saturday. Locally owned and operated. Call 601-735-3103. When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, our friendly hometown team will steer you in the right direction toward the protection you need at a price you can afford. We offer a variety of discounts for a variety of reasons, from your car's safety features to your history of safe driving. Call Alpha agent Mark Gordon at 735-1186. Drive away with savings today at Alpha Insurance. Thanks for listening to Wayne County Football Show, brought to you by Extreme Guns, Alpha Insurance, Boondock Eddies, Circle C Tractor, and First State Bank.